टूडे वी विल डिस्कस लैटरल वेंट्रिकल द कैविटी विद इन द सेरेब्रम दिस वॉट वी आर सेइंग इज द हेमी सेक्शन ऑफ ब्रेन दिस वन इज द राइट सेरेब्रल हेमिसफेयर एंड दिस वन इज द लेफ्ट सेरेब्रल हेमिसफेयर एंड दिस कैविटी वॉट वी आर सेइंग हेयर इज द लैटरल वेंट्रिकल इट हैज गॉट फोर पार्ट दैट फॉर द डिस्क्रिप्टिव पर्पज दिस वॉट वी आर सेइंग This is the interventricular foramen which connect third ventricle with the lateral ventricle. Here lies a strictly midline structure which is the third ventricle and through which it is connected to the lateral ventricle. This foramen of Mundo which is bounded anteriorly by the column of Hornis and posteriorly by the anterior end of the thalamus. This one is the anterior end of thalamus. Okay. Now this anterior horn of the lateral ventricle. that is anterior to the interventricular foramen up to this much is the anterior horn it lies within the frontal lobe of the cerebral hemisphere whereas from interventricular foramen up to the splenium of corpus callosum this one this c shaped structure is the corpus callosum what we are seeing here this one is the rostrum parts of corpus callosum this one is rostrum here is the genu this one is body and the most posteriorly this one is the is plenum of corpus callosum so from interventricular foramen anteriorly this one is the anterior horn of the lateral ventricle which lies within the frontal lobe of cerebral hemisphere and posterior to the interventricular foramen up to this plenum this one is the what we are seeing here this one is the body of lateral ventricle okay which is a cavity within the parietal lobe of the cerebral hemisphere and after this plenum which we can't see here is the posterior horn of the lateral ventricle which lies within the occipital lobe of the cerebral hemisphere here you can see this is the model of lateral ventricle and here you can see this one is the anterior horn which lies within frontal lobe this is the body and this is the inferior horn inferior horn which is the continuation of the body and posteriorly this is the extension which is the posterior horn which lies within the occipital lobe and this inferior horn lies within the temporal lobe this one is our temporal lobe here is the temporal lobe and inferior horn of the lateral ventricle lies at the level of superior temporal sulcus and it extends up to the 2.5 cm behind the temporal pole this one is the most projected part is the temporal pole and 2.5 cm behind up to this area lies the inferior horn of the lateral ventricle within within this temporal lobe lies a cavity okay so coming to the boundary of anterior horn of the lateral ventricle anteriorly it is bounded by genu of corpus callosum superiorly it is bounded by inferior surface of inferior surface of body of corpus callosum this is the inferior surface of body of corpus callosum and medially this is the curtain like structure this which is known as septum pellucidum which extends from the inferior surface of the body of corpus callosum up to the superior surface of fornix this structure is fornix this one is the column of fornix this one is the body and posteriorly there is crux of fornix so this curtain like structure extends from corpus callosum up to the fornix so it forms the medial boundary of the anterior horn as well as the medial boundary of body of lateral ventricle so here we are discussing the anterior horn so anteriorly it is bounded by genu of corpus callosum superiorly it is bounded by the inferior surface of the body of corpus callosum and medially bounded by septum pellucidum lateral wall is formed by head of caudate nucleus and floor is formed by rostrum of corpus callosum so this is the boundary of anterior horn which lies anterior to the interventricular foramen after this this cavity is the this cavity is the posterior to the interventricular foramen up to the splenium this one is the body of the lateral ventricle okay body of the lateral ventricle so 
is boundary superiorly it is bounded by the inferior surface of body of corpus callosum same and this medially bounded by this is curtain like a structure that is septum pellucidum and inferiorly this is the floor okay this is the floor of the lateral ventricle body of lateral ventricle so it is somewhat inclined laterally it is somewhat at superior level and medially it is somewhat at inferior level from lateral to medial first there is this one is the body of caudate nucleus here this one is the body of caudate nucleus then comes thalamus this one this one this is the striate terminalis first body of the caudate nucleus and this is the striate terminalis this elevated part is the striate terminalis which is a tract connecting the hypothalamus anteriorly with the amygdala nucleus in the temporal lobe okay so it is going that way so first there is body of caudate nucleus then striate terminalis after which there is some bluish structure which is known as thalmostriate vein so this is thalmostriate vein then comes superior surface of the thalamus this one here lies the superior surface of the thalamus then comes choroidal plexus this this fimbricated structure this is the choroidal plexus and most medially this one is the fornix okay so you can memorize by this mnemonic kasab teridis spin the finally kasab c s b so first caudate nucleus then striate terminalis and then thalmostriate vein kasab teridis that is thalamus spin the finally p for plexus choroidal plexus and finally is the fornix okay so we have read the boundary of the body of lateral ventricle now coming to the posterior horn okay it lies within the occipital lobe and so this is what we are seeing in the horizontal section of brain this is our posterior horn of the lateral ventricle here you can see this is the occipital lobe and what structure is there this one is the splenium of corpus callosum and the fiber passing from the splenium of corpus callosum is known as forceps major and here is this one is the calcarine sulcus here comes the anterior end of the calcarine sulcus and both this structure lies medially okay which we can see here this elevated part this elevated part is forceps major and it is like a bulb that's why it is known as bulb of forceps major which is nothing but the fiber from the splenium of corpus callosum and this elevated structure after that this one is the calcar avis this structure is calcar avis so here we can see also this is the medial relation this is bulb of forceps major and here is the calcar avis here also this is bulb of forceps major and this one is calcar avis and laterally there is times of india that is first there is tapetum this one is tapetum which is the fiber coming from the body of corpus callosum okay this is tapetum then there is this one is the optic radiation which is a part of internal capsule retro lentiform part of the internal capsule going to the visual area here up to here we can see this is the optic radiation so posterior horn of the lateral ventricle it is bounded medially by the first this one is the bulb of forceps major and then calcar avis and laterally from medial to lateral first there is this one is the tapetum which is a part of the corpus callosum from the body of corpus callosum the fiber from the body of corpus callosum is tapetum then comes optic radiation which is the one of the projectional white fiber that is fiber of internal capsule retro lentiform part okay and after that this one is the inferior longitudinal bundle okay this is association fiber 
at inferior level this is the inferior and longitudinally running so inferior longitudinal bundle okay so this is the boundary of posterior horn of the lateral ventricle now coming to the this is what we are seeing here here this one is the inferior horn of the lateral ventricle it is bounded from it is bounded medially from anterior to posterior first there is choroidal plexus here you can see this one is the choroidal plexus then this structure is hippocampus and then comes collateral eminence what is collateral eminence here in this section we can see this is the inferior surface of the temporal lobe inferior surface of the temporal lobe and there are two longitudinally running sulcus and first there is this one is the collateral sulcus and laterally this is temporo occipital sulcus okay so this collateral sulcus is somewhat make an impression over the inferior horn okay so what we are seeing here medial boundary from anterior to posterior this one is the choroidal plexus here you can see this one is the choroidal plexus then this one is the hippocampus and then here is the collateral eminence and laterally laterally it is bounded first there is this structure is striate terminalis coming to the amygdala nucleus striate terminalis then this is the tail of caudate nucleus this structure is tail of caudate nucleus and then what we are seeing here is again times of india that from medial to lateral first there is stapetum then optic radiation and then inferior longitudinal bundle okay stapetum that is the fiber of corpus callosum passing from the body okay so tapetum and this is optic radiation which is the part of internal capsule going to the visual area and then inferior longitudinal bundle so this is the boundary of inferior horn of the lateral ventricle that's all thank you